Hi, my name is Chris Harris from Bullet Central and welcome to another one of our Tech Central videos. Um, today we're going to be working on my favorite um, product, which is the, the Bix and Andy trigger. Now, and, and we're, gonna, we're gonna touch a little bit on what I would call a thorough cleaning. Um, in the past, we have given you a video on how to do a, what I would call a basic cleaning, and that is just opening the trigger up, flushing some fluid through it, and making sure that you get it all dried out, and that's fine. Um, but we have had two triggers back here that were malfunctioning, and we got them all opened, I looked into them, and I found that in both cases there were tiny little particles of lint and some other crud that I couldn't identify that had been carried into the trigger from the cleaning fluids. So from cleaning the rifle, people, maybe they weren't using a bore guide properly or a solvent port, and the solvents had poured into the, the trigger, carried some uh, little goodies down there, and the triggers weren't working reliably. So it is important that a trigger of this grade is, uh, is going to be uh, kept clean and uh, reliable. Just some of the things that you're going to need are some solvent. I particularly like um, uh, using Brake Clean because it really does do a thorough job of cleaning all the oils and dirt out of the trigger. Plus it's got a little bit of oomph behind it and um, it uh, leaves absolutely no residue which is good. I, uh, you can use lighter fluid if you want. I don't think it's as good, but it's certainly a fine solvent and it'll work. You will need some air, either from your air compressor or from a little can like this, uh, because when we finished, we're going to want to make sure that the trigger is uh, completely dry on the inside. Some people feel that there should be some residue left, maybe from lighter fluid or what, fluid, uh, but uh, not a good idea with the Bix and Dandy. We prefer to see that trigger absolutely bone dry on the inside. You'll also want um, your smartphone. So uh, you may, why are you gonna you know, have to phone home or call Bullet Central for some help, call us for some help? No, um, I want you to use this because if you're not a fair with the inside of the trigger, uh, when we open it up, it, you know, can get a little bit complex and there are tons of little, little parts in there and you're gonna be a little concerned about getting them back into the the right manner. It's not a problem, but uh, but certainly um, I think you're going to be a lot more confident if you can refer back to a picture that you've just taken, um, and and you know you get it all in uh, right the first time round. Um, I think it's a good idea to have a little bit of uh, you know a, a little tweezer. So go and steal one of these babies from your um, wife or husband, you know, if you don't uh, have one, you'll want a Phillips screwdriver that'll fit these uh, these flat screws on the cover and with your trigger you would have got a one and a half millimeter hex wrench um, that uh, you're going to need to actually open up the trigger. I also like to work on something like this, a lint-free cloth, because um, you know, these, we're going to take the parts out of the trigger. Um, there's two little balls in here and you're going to see that in a moment. We don't want those things rolling all over the place and you having to go look for them in springs and so on and so forth. All right, so with that said, um, I'm going to uh, just open this trigger up. And the first thing I'm going to do is just use my Phillips screwdriver to take these screws out. They should come out fairly easily. Four stainless steel flat head screws. Now, as we showed you in the previous video, once we got these out, um, the, the, the trigger housing is really tightly machined and you are not going to be able to just lift this cover, this front cover off here. Um, even if you, you know, try and edge a knife in there, it's going to be really difficult to get out and I don't advise it because you could ruin the, 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 the casing or scratch it or whatever. Uh, we have had this trigger designed with two little jack screws in place. Um, so uh, two tiny little set screws that the one and a half millimeter wrench will fit. And so all you do is you put this in here yeah, and you start easing this cover off. And you can see here as I'm jacking that screw in there, it's just opening up the front cover and then open it up a little bit. 
go to the other one on the other side, give that one a little bit of a wind in. And so far you can start seeing that the cover is starting to come off. Now this is actually the top of the trigger, so just, you know, probably best to take it off in that orientation. So there's your, there's your cover and this is what the trigger uh, looks like on the inside. The first thing that I do always is just to take my Allen wrench and I wind these jack screws. I screw them back out so that they are below the surface here. Otherwise, when you put that cover back on later, when we're reassembling, you're going to find the cover's not going to be able to seat itself properly. So in fact, now this trigger, you can see, will still work um, fine with even, it's, a, it's amazing how well this trigger's been machined, uh, even with the, the cover off. So there's no support on, on these little arbors and that, and that trigger's still working fine. So now this is where we need to start um, removing the parts and so I'm going to take my tweezer and I take the reset bar out and remember when I take this reset bar out it's holding the tops here in so I'll just take that out oops oh at this point I should mention this is where your telephone comes in handy all right so take it take a photograph of it uh, keep it in focus so you know it's easy to refer back to and uh, and then you won't have to worry about the orientation of these little parts, okay? So I'm gonna take this out. That's my reset bar, okay? I then take my top seal off. Underneath the top seal, there is the tiny little spring for the reset, um, the reset of the top seal. So we'll take that off. Here are your two balls. Now this is a used trigger, but it's not necessarily a dirty trigger, so I'm not going to be able to show you much dirt here today. Um, this is the retainer bar. That comes off. And we remove the bottoms here. And then finally, the, the trigger shoe. Now the trigger shoe has actually got a little spring in it. Um, just between the trigger shoe and the the housing so you've got to be a little bit careful when this comes off because it could go jumping into space you leave that off and I, you'll see i just held my thumb over the part here where uh that you know the little pocket that retains the screw take take that that spring out and put it down so and then you're left with a uh with a housing and what I would do, you know, is also get a loop and, and take a look inside you because if you were actually experiencing some difficulties before you embarked on this thorough cleaning, um, you may find, and I found this on two, uh, the two triggers that I did see, I found dirt that had accumulated in this area that was preventing, there was so much dirt down here from lint and um, crud that it was preventing the trigger from resetting properly in in in, in this um, in, in those particular cases. So um, check it all out. Make sure it's nice and clean. This is where I'm not going to use brake clean now because it's really smelly stuff. But uh, and this trick is fairly clean anyway. Um, uh, spray it in there thoroughly, and then um, uh, very importantly dry the trigger out. We want you to use your air, uh, make sure that this, this trigger is thoroughly dried out and then we're going to move on to the parts and individually inspect them, clean them out, same thing again, um, give them a little bit of um, solvent to get any potential dust, grease, cleaning fluids that have got down there. Um, you want to make sure these, these parts are clean and bone dry. Start, when we start putting it back together is we'll start say with the uh, with the uh, um, the trigger shoe and before I even put say the spring in here properly I'm going to put it in without the spring and you want to make sure that all these parts are moving freely on their little arbors okay so in this case in this this is the area where you may well have to refer to your uh, photograph you know to make sure you've got it in nicely put this in make sure that th this part is nice and loose it's, uh, it's moving nicely on the arbor and for each one of them so here you put your tops in 
Make sure there's absolutely no friction, no dirt, no nothing that's bothering it. Putting it back together is pretty much the reverse order. Um, put the spring into the sear like this. Get it over the arbor. And you gotta compress the spring ever so slightly just to get it to um, slide into position there. And uh, then you'll feel there's probably a little bit of tension on, on the trigger. So we'll just start with that. Everything's nice and dry and clean now. Should be using the tweezers here, but put that little spring in for the tops here. Making sure again, please, that all these parts are swinging nice and easily um, on the little pins in place there. And the last item we're gonna, well, second last item before we put the um, the balls back in as you put the reset bar in get you'll see that's really there's there's no special orientation it can go in either way put it into the hole in the tops here and you'll see it'll actually just catch in the bottom of this uh, the bottoms here yeah so once you got that in place everything should be functioning drop the balls in to the housing and now we really at the point, uh, I'd probably just check it over now, make sure that there isn't any wetness anywhere, any fluid, it's completely dry. I mean, you would have done that already, but just make double sure. Put the lid back on, you're gonna have to sort of, because these things have been very tightly machined, you're gonna have to um, just press it back in place. And then you'll be able to see that the that the cover is actually just fitting up nicely you know against the housing again if it isn't the first thing just check to make sure that your jack screws that you back them out i forget a lot so that's thing i do a lot so just make sure they back the hut and uh, it's not preventing the cover from from going in and let's get these in Last one. And then make sure that your, you know, your trigger is functioning properly. If you have any questions, please give us a call. We love chatting about you, your shooting, your, if you've got issues, we're gonna assist you with that as well. The number's below. Um, visit our website if you need to look at some of the other videos or you, know, you need any other product or triggers. Um, we're here to help you. So. Thank you again. Um, look forward to seeing you next time.